welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information the troglies guitar show for 2021 fender came up with this new prestige collection of instruments where they gave 12 master builders the task of creating something interesting and unusual our first one here actually comes from paul waller this is a signature stratocaster that he's created right here with a sugar skull design if you're not familiar with what that is i believe that's within the dia de los muertos but oh sweet it even glows in the dark a black light type thing so this is a holiday down in mexico kind of similar to halloween but not exactly the same thing if you've ever seen disney's coco you'll kind of know what we're talking about here so besides the really cool paint job it has a matching painted pick guard, which I think I, I really like the color choice he did here. There's like day and night at the same time. These look like chicken rockets to me. <laughs> so I might not understand all the references hidden within this, but it's kind of cool for a Stratocaster when you actually get up and look at it. So we got a roasted alder body. They've got a rift sawn maple neck with a C-shaped neck profile. I like the choice of the black headstock up there but it's looking like they left the backside of the guitar alone. But they named this one the Sugar Surprise Strat. This one's pretty cool as well. I've had a similar guitar to this one that I believe Yuri and his uh, apprentice made, but this has a beautiful quilty flamed maple top here on the Stratocaster. No pick guard at all. You've got the red line pickup cavities as they normally do on this style, but take a look at that. You also have covers on these. Kind of looks like a Dan Electro in that aspect and all gold knobs. This is certainly quite the elegant looking Stratocaster. It's fancy, but yet plain at the same time, you know, missing all the pick garden stuff. And of course it's bejeweled along the edges. You can see the individual gemstones and gold that's inlaid here. I really like those red colored interior routings right there. It definitely pops with the gold. And then we start moving on to the neck. You can see they used abalone inlays here and it's a quilted bird's eye maple neck. The knobs look pretty low profile too. And they even gave the headstock a purple burst. And of course you can't forget the golden tuners. This was actually the guitar that made me want to start this video because I thought this was that guitar. You know, here's one also built by Yuri. It's at $30,000. So if you happen to like Telecasters better than Stratocasters like me, you can get pretty much the exact same thing just ported over here. And I would say this actually has a better top on it but that just goes down to my own personal preferences. But it is a very similar design here. That headstock truly does look great with some nice lighting. It reminds me of outer space. Scott Buell came up with something interesting, an acrylic jazz master. All right, I'll bite. I like acrylic guitars. I haven't had too many, but I don't think I've ever seen a jazz master like this. That's a nice invention, it's cool. I don't know if I'd pay crazy custom shop prices for it, but it's interesting nonetheless. So you can see completely through it. You can see all the wiring and whatnot if you want. To take this a step further, for the pickup covers, I would have went clear. <laughs> but I especially appreciate this. So the view from the back, you can see all the stuff even clearer. But take a look at this. You can actually see the neck underneath there. And it looks like it has his signature on the back of it. So that's a nice place to hide your signature. But then you get this acrylic body, but a super flamed maple neck. That just seems funny to me because, you know, plastic mixed with beautifully flamed maple. But that's kind of an interesting bridge design they've got going on there. It's like inlaid brass saddles. I don't think I've ever seen one of those before. Then again, I'm not the biggest jazz master guy. Ebony fingerboard too. That's cool. That matches really well with the body. Next up is Dave Wilson's creation, the Tapestry Telecaster. I like that name. I can't say it does much for me in the stock photo, but let's check out Fender's video here. It's starting to come to life a bit more. So once again, we get a super flamed neck, but you get this like custom design burnt into it. Oh, interesting. So a tapestry, think of it like uh, a goat skin tapestry or something. It's all like folded up and then you display it. It looks like they've got like some sort of a flame figuring pattern underneath it. And then they put the design over top of that. That is pretty interesting how they would combine those in order to make this. So I think in person that would actually look really cool. It looks like they hid the artist's name right down here. So an interesting Telecaster probably wouldn't be my first choice though. But this one certainly has a pretty nice neck on it, especially when you get to the fretboard shots. Right here, that's the money maker. 
Jason Smith created a custom 60s P bass special. Can't say this one really speaks to me either, but hey, who knows? Maybe this video will change my mind. Yeah. It's got a certain floral attribute to it. Like, this looks like some sort of an old barn door, which you could, like, symbolize with, like, grass, soil, growing things. And then you get little flowers and vines and whatnot. Oh, okay. I see what, what they're going for this one, but maybe not meeting my own personal taste. But I like the way that they've aged the neck. That looks really old. Like, this just looks like somebody's guitar that they kind of made themselves. <laughs> I do like the knots that they left alone, like there's these wood things in here, portions of the guitar missing because the wood had rotted out there or whatever causes those. I really like that decal, that looks nice. It looks like they were going for an early P-Bass vibe with modern playability, but an old western appearance, okay. But the body is a reclaimed roasted pine body, and they left all the nail and bolt holes as we just saw. It was originally from an old grain elevator in Minnesota. I mean, unless it was a famous old grain elevator, uh, I, I don't really see the appeal of that one. I know they've taken like old concert seats before and turned them into guitars. I understand that. That's pretty cool. This one, eh, I, I'm sorry. Don't like it that much. But Carlos Lopez here goes crazy with a Marauder? So he's blended the little known Fender Marauder with one of the 12 string ones. I like the finish on this one. It works, it stands out. I like the matching headstocks. You get the Fender 12 string one and the regular kind of Fender style one down there. You don't see these things come up too often. I mean, look at all those switches. Oh, there's the return of that bridge on something else here. Maybe I just don't know enough about these. But it looks like, uh, I, I would guess these just turn on each individual pickup and you can choose from there kind of something similar here i'm not really too familiar but it's all custom decked out with block inlays too as far as the double neck fenders have gone most of them they just look out of place but this one i think it works i think he stumbled onto something here good old kyle mcmillan what has he created for us something eclectic i would say custom burled redwood stratocaster so this one, they've uh, filled some of the top in with a resin in order to give it this different vibe, as far as I understand it anyways. It might not be the look for everyone, but it reminds me of uh, like leaves sitting on top of a puddle. You could also say it's like an outer space type theme, but I really appreciate these pickups. So it looks like they just kind of put a tortoise shell covering over top of them and cut out the golden pickup covers and matched it with the knobs. That actually looks pretty good. And it appears we do have some sort of a binding on this one. It looks like that also might match the tortoise shell right here. It's kind of hard to tell from this angle, but I'm betting that is the case. Judging by the bridge, we don't actually have a tremolo in here. And only two pickups on a Stratocaster? Okay, this is a Strat I can get behind. It looks like some sort of a roasted ash body, maybe. It is certainly out there. But check this out, an African blackwood fingerboard. I've never heard of that before. And it looks like this one gets a really nice neck and abalone inlay as well. Interesting choice, a brass nut. That looks good with the golden fender logo and the gold tuners and string tree. Match that with that really dark colored neck. Not for everyone, but I would review and demo that guitar. It's got enough interesting things about it. But so far, I think Mr. Krause here has actually created the coolest one of the series. It might not look like much, but wait until you see this one in the video. So they call it a box top telly because they've actually inlaid the top here like how they make a box. So you see these little tabs here? That's how they join the top. So this little maple top that you got right here, they just cut all those sections out and like glued it in that way, which I just find so fascinating. It, it just gives it that checkered board binding appearance. It's just a different way to craft a Telecaster and I dig it because there's only so many ways to build a Telecaster, but I've never personally seen this before, especially this shot. It's so beautiful. You can see it's a continuation of that body and then they just didn't lay it like that. That's cool. It might not be that complex. It might not necessarily be the prettiest guitar in the whole series, but it is the one that gets me the most excited because it's just cool. I like it. And just like all the other ones, we get crazily flamed necks. More of a uh, traditional style Fender Telecaster logo. So I guess if you're going to put a top on a Telecaster, you might as well do it in an interesting way instead of just those thin veneers. 
because judging by that, it would have to be a little bit more of a top than it normally is. Greg Fessler created the Tomo Ash Telly. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a link to a video on this one, so we can't do too much, but it just looks like they're using a Tomo Ash top. Wow, that's ash. And Greg was saving this one for a special occasion. Super flamed U-shaped neck. I usually like those with abalone dots and a Seymour Duncan vintage P90 pickup with the sawed off Tele bridge. Okay, so it's just kind of a nice Telecaster with an unusual top to it. But okay, so the next one, the box top Tele, it's cool, right? But I think so far the absolute number one madman of this whole series goes to Chris Fleming. Yes, yes please, make this a production model, Fender. The Jazz Telecaster. So this one takes a Telecaster, but throws it all the way back to the yesteryear, just gives it a neck pickup and makes it suited for jazz. You even have one of those wooden bridges on it. It looks like it's drilled directly into the top, so not a floating bridge or anything, but they also went as far as creating a brand new, never seen before bridge style on this, an F stamped logo. If this isn't in the new Parallel Universe series or whatever might come in the future, it needs to be because it's sweet. And it only gets crazier because all the rosewood that was used on this particular one is Brazilian rosewood. And they went as far as using a real spruce top and they chambered out the mahogany body. So this will have a little bit of an acoustic presence to it as well. And they did the tortoise shell binding too. And check that out, it's multi-bound. The only thing that would have made this even better is if they would have bothered to give it fret nibs. <laughs> That's not really a fender thing though. The, you even get the Brazilian rosewood knobs on this one. You won't be able to get this thing out of the country very easily, but man, did this guy go crazy or what? Even with a soft V neck shape style, they went as far as going for the original snake head headstock design. I mean, check out those tuner tips. It reminds me of something that I was kind of cooking up with Gibson, but unfortunately that idea got shot down because it was a bit too complex. Next up here, we got a crazy one from Vincent Van Trite. That's a cool name, the custom Flamingo Sunset Telly. <laughs> I could see this being displayed in like a, a Hawaiian hotel or something. I don't know if they have flamingos over there, but it's got its own certain vibe to it. It looks road worn, that's the thing. Like if this just looked brand new, it wouldn't look as good. It almost has like a, a Japanese kimono vibe to it as well, but that's clearly not quite what they're going for. But the relicking on the side actually looks very convincing and good. And I like that it's like an off-white color. But they even went as far as doing the inlays differently. Okay. All right. I, I, I see what you're going for it. I wouldn't want to buy this, but I can definitely appreciate it as a piece of art. I think I actually like the back better than I do the top. I mean, who doesn't want flamingos on their guitar? <laughs> I like it. It appears the aging continued on to the backside of the neck as well. Ooh, sweet, and they even did the headstock as a painted cap. There's no flamingos though, that's kind of a letdown. Fender doesn't usually do much with custom inlays, so that's actually pretty cool. The flower, like a shaker, a martini. And now Dennis has a custom 62P base. Kind of similar to that last one we were looking at. This is one I can certainly appreciate as an art piece, but maybe not spending, you know, 30,000 plus on it. So they've got this tree design and it just kind of encompasses the entire guitar. I love the way that it just perfectly snakes onto the neck. It looks like tree roots at that point. And I think the only way that this works is they had to match the body wood color with the neck wood color. That's actually pretty cool. The artwork was done by Madeline Hanlon, and it says he was trying to channel his inner horror story buff because it's just one singular dead tree on a dead tree. Ooh, sweet! They even did it on the back. That's the selling feature on this one. They didn't skimp, so this is meant to be like a displaying art piece that's rotating. If it was just on the top, I would have knocked some points off, but you know, that's pretty cool that they went as far as to also do it on the back. So props to the artist on this one, especially since it is a wood burning technique and they even did it on the headstock. They certainly did. So that was all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 guitars that were part of the Fender Prestige collection.
But now for the fun part. We've seen all 12 of them, but how would I personally rank them based off of originality, uniqueness, and if I would buy them? Number one definitely goes to this guy right here. It is the most unique out of everything. It's an adaptation of the Telecaster that I've never seen before, and I love that it harkens back to the old world of things. It is just a beautiful masterpiece. Number two goes to the box top telly. It's a sweet name. I really like that checkerboard pattern that they've got going on here. Maybe not the most fancy looking one of the whole series, but I love the Capernita-esque styled pit guard that doesn't cover over the entire thing. And check that out. They even have a maple truss rod cap instead of the usual walnut. Number three, I go for this alien crater one because yeah, it's got interesting pickups on it. It's got a lot of different colors going on. I just enjoy it. That's why I put it at number three. Number four goes to the Sugar Skull. I think what ultimately saves this one from being farther down in the list is the whole black light UV paint or whatever they used. This thing really comes to life. It's gonna speak to certain people. Despite not wanting to own this at first, this silly flamingo guitar, for some reason, it's just warmed up to me. So I put it here at number five. I always like animal themes and it's been aged very tastefully. Number six, I've got the tapestry tally. I really don't like the design all that much, but I like that they've got that flame figuring hidden underneath it. You get the flamed neck. It looks good. They had a theme, they stuck with it, and they went for it. Number seven, I like the double neck Marauder, but it's not necessarily a unique idea. Fender's really been toying with these double neck guitars lately. Number eight, I love Yuri's work, but it feels like he makes the same guitar each and every time. But I think that comes down to his customer and fan base, they want this. I would like to see him branch out into something a little bit more extreme and new with the fancy inlay work. Otherwise, this one would have definitely ranked higher because it is a beautiful Stratocaster. Now the Jazzmaster, it's not necessarily an original idea. I mean, you get the Dan Armstrong Lucite guitars, but I have not seen a Jazzmaster do it before. So that's why I put it at number nine. Now the dead tree base, it's cool, but it just seems like you could have done this on a made in Mexico one and had pretty much the exact same thing. I don't really see why we needed a master builder involved with this particular one if he's not the one doing the artwork. Number 11, I gave to the Tamo Ash Telly. I really think this is unfair because there wasn't a video that I could see of it, but it is kind of just a plain Telecaster. There's no pick guard. It's just two soap bar P90s. I'm sure the neck looks fantastic. It plays great and sounds great, but in comparison to all these other ones, not quite as special. I've seen other things similar to that outside of this series. And number 12, I'm sorry, I, I just don't like this one. <laughs> Maybe I'm not understanding the full theme behind it, and that's very likely true, but it just doesn't necessarily speak to me. So troglodytes, I hope you enjoy checking out this new series from Fender with me. Will I be buying and reviewing any of these? Uh, probably not. I can't even find them for sale quite yet, so that means they're probably already spoken for, or they just haven't hit the stores yet. But thank you troglodytes for watching. Don't forget to let me know your favorite one down in the comment section below. Leave a like on the video and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.